Miraculous Ladybug is a show that hit me by storm. I saw some fan art of it, thought, hey, that looks cute. And the next thing I know, I'm binge watching through all the English dubs, blazing through the French audio English subs, and eventually watching the new released episodes in French, a language I don't understand, all just to see the show. It got me hooked. And why not? For an animated kids show, the animation is top-notch, the characters are likable, it's incredibly expressive, and Superheroes in Paris is a pretty cool setting to work with. Season 1 is designed so you can come into any episode and get a basic understanding of the characters, villain, and scenario. And you don't have to worry about spoilers except for, like, 5 episodes. They are all meant to stand on their own, and that works fine. I'm hoping to see a more plot-driven Season 2 with a linear timeline and some character development, but Season 1 was a great way to introduce a lot of new fans, and a way to gauge interest, if you will. Every single episode of Miraculous Ladybug has something to take away from it, whether it be the cool villain designs, the dynamic of two superheroes, or even just having a laugh, no episode is really bad in any way. There are some episodes that I enjoy a lot more than others, however, and that's what this list is here for. Besides overall enjoyment, I'm judging these episodes with the following criteria. How good the animation quality is, how creative the villain is, how cool the fight with the villain is, any kind of character development made within the episode, and lastly, any kind of buildup it gives for Season 2. And if it wasn't obvious, I'm going to be going through a lot of important moments in these episodes, so spoiler alert. We got a lot to cover, but first, let's list some honorable mentions that didn't quite make it to the top 10. The Pharaoh. This episode has two shining points, its villain and its humor. The Pharaoh has a great design, a great voice, and some awesome superpowers. He calls upon different Egyptian gods and uses the powers of strength, flight, time warping, and... Mummification? Freaky, but cool. This episode also gets points for Alia. She gets tossed around like a rag doll the whole time and provides some pretty funny dialogue. Uh, excuse you, but I make excellent sacrificing material. We also learn that Miraculous have been around for a long time, which gives us some well-needed exposition. It does have its faults, though. The reason for the akumatization is pretty dumb. I mean, using an ancient Egyptian artifact to supposedly raise the dead sounds a bit crazy to me too, dude. The animation also seemed off in some spots, especially Alia's video on her blog. It frankly creeps me out to look at it. Kung Food Kung Food makes it here mostly because of the Adrian and Marinette interaction. They never seem so comfortable around each other. Marinette barely stutters, there's more friendly physical contact, and heck, Adrian even calls out Chloe on her shenanigans. This episode also gives us the coolest fist bump in history. What holds the episode back is the villain, though. Kung Fu has a questionable name and design, and the fight with him seemed a bit anticlimactic. The whole hot receipt thing to constrain him when she already has her yo-yo seems kinda odd. The fights with his henchmen were pretty cool though, as the duo found some creative ways to take them down. Reflecta I'll be honest, I don't consider this a runner-up for the top 10, but I do have to say that this episode has the best reason for an akumatized villain. Julika made me feel the most sympathy towards any character on the show, almost to tears, I swear to god. Whereas all the other cases happen to be blown out of proportion or are completely nonsensical, Julika's felt real, because stuff like this does happen. I felt so sad for her and hated Chloe and Sabrina so much for this, I, I just had to mention it here. Everything else Reflecta had was okay, but I needed to mention Julika here as the best reason for an Akuma, hands down. And now, to the official top 10. Let's get started. <laughs> Pixelator. 
Pixelator gives us the creepiest villain in the series. His design is creepy, his catchphrase is creepy, and he zaps people straight to the Shadow Realm, a vast white nothingness. That's terrifying. Ladybug takes the lead in this episode as Adrian is stuck in the void. She goes all Sherlock Holmes on him and finds all the people trapped in photographs, as well as discovers his obsession with Jagged Stone, who by the way is a great recurring character and I love seeing him. We're also given some funny moments with Ladybug's pixelized limbs that made me laugh a few times. This episode also has the coolest use of Cataclysm ever. Breaking the digital dimension and freeing all the trapped people. Awesome. Honestly, this episode would be a lot higher. If it weren't for one thing. This scene. No! <laughs> uh, meow. Okay, Tiki is always talking about how she can't be seen in public, right? And yet when she finally is, they just show her meowing and cutting to the next scene. Why? I, I want to see them struggle to get out of this situation. You, you set something up so well and then drop it without explanation. It, it seemed like such a cop-out and I'm really disappointed they went that way. This is the one major thing holding this episode back. It's still good, but man, does this scene drive me crazy! Amateur. Headshot. Volpina. Now, given that it's the season finale, you'd probably expect this to be higher. But, I'll be honest, as a villain, I've never been a fan of Volpina. Yeah, her ability to create illusions is cool, but... Once you figure that out, it just becomes a matter of wiping them away and putting her in a corner. Which is basically what Ladybug and Cat Noir did. As a result, the villain fight was pretty boring. Even the animation for this episode didn't stand out too much. Adrian did have a moment where he stood up to Ladybug, which was something completely new and added a nice bit of character development. This proves that he is able to call her out when she does something questionable. But what this episode lacked in a villain, it makes up for in pure build-up. We introduce Leela. Lila. 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 Or Lila? As a new character. But what will she be like when everyone finds out she's a compulsive liar? Given that Marinette was the only person she didn't talk to, will she be a reluctant friend? Is Volpina gonna return as an anti hero or villain of sorts? I think having her illusion power alongside another Akuma villain would be awesome. And the dynamic of friend in civilian form with Marinette and enemy in superhero form with Ladybug would be amazing. Does Adrian now know that Ladybug has a weakness in him? Does Hawk Moth know that Ladybug has an Adrian weakness? How about Gabriel's safe? What is a picture of Adrian's mom, a map of Tibet, the book about miraculous heroes, and possibly the peacock miraculous doing in there? What's he gonna do when he finds out it's missing? And what about Master Fu? What kind of stories and secrets is he going to share? So many questions. It's the best way to keep your viewers hooked for sure. And it's because of that, that it takes the ninth spot. What does the fox say? Animan. The setup for this episode is pretty cool. They decide to go to the zoo so Nino can try and tell Marinette that he likes her, and the headset gag they went with was really funny and provided some nice jokes. The villain in this episode was also given a cool power to transform between as many animals as they could fit in their budget, and his voice while in panther form is really threatening and fits just nicely. Hey kiddo, still up for a little race? Go ahead, I'll give you a head start. The reason for the akumatization though, he got salty at a teenager calling his panther names? Okay, Hawkmoth takes what he can get, I suppose. Besides that though, the animation was crisp and the fight allowed for Ladybug and Cat Noir to outsmart their opponent by trapping him in a bus cage, until he turned into a T-Rex that is. We even got a moment where Cat Noir had a sudden burst of anger, which was nice to see. However, unpopular opinion time. Saying, I almost lost you. In the French version, seemed like too big of a statement. I figured she would at least tell him she's planning on jumping into a T-Rex's mouth. And second, she reappears so fast, Cat Noir doesn't have time to really process it. Now, 
If she disappeared for a much longer time, say like a full episode, then I could buy it. But given that she showed she was fine immediately afterwards, Cat Noir's reaction seemed a bit forced. Saying something like, please don't scare me like that again, would fit a lot better in my opinion. Okay, moving on. Interestingly enough, we get to see Alia and Nino together at the end. If every episode is canon, then maybe we'll see these two in a relationship when season 2 comes out. We'll just have to wait and see. Don't move. Can't see us if we don't move. Lady Wi-Fi Lady Wi-Fi gives us Alia as a villain after being wrongly accused and mistreated by Chloe and the school principal. You know, Chloe is responsible for a lot of Akuma victims. Hawkmoth must be thankful. This episode provides us with one of my favorite villains in the series. Her design is fantastic. The color scheme and glowing Wi-Fi signal looks great, and the use of various functions on her phone is really creative. Basically turning her into a walking YouTube where she can pause, stop, lock, and broadcast wherever she is. Not to mention teleport. The sound effects for her powers are awesome too. Alia makes one of my favorite villains because of how convincing she is. Bringer of the truth. Her speeches, emotion, and anger while she's fighting makes her the spotlight of this episode easily. We also get to see a great moment of trust between Ladybug and Cat Noir. He has the chance to see who she really is, but chooses not to as it's not what she wants. And of course, the first thing Alia wants upon being de is an interview. Classic Alia. Although, somebody should probably tell her that revealing Ladybug's identity wouldn't be a good idea with a villain like Hawkmoth around. Aw, oh, how romantic. Tomcat's come to save his love bug. I am not his love bug. The Mime. We are given a brand new character and scenario to work with for this episode. Milen's dad, a mime, who was always late with excuses, becomes akumatized after a betrayal from his co-worker. Now his actual power is really predictable, but it works so well. Being a mime, he is able to create anything invisibly, and with that, we get a ton of great scenarios. A locked cage gag. <laughs> A car chase sequence. A rocket launcher. Firing arrows. An invisible sword duel. And one of my favorite ways to trap a villain, using their own anger against them. And of course making the Eiffel Tower fall on them helps a lot too. Thank god Ladybug can fix that. The animation was great, the villain and villain fight were superb, and we even had Marinette trying to fix a problem she created by stealing a phone again. How Alia never questioned Marinette's ability to get an interview with Ladybug, I will never know. But it was a great act of friendship, and this was a great episode. Yoink. Also, great job English Dub, you made me laugh pretty hard with that one. Stormy Weather. Ah yes, the very first episode I watched. And it still holds up to this day. Now, I don't care about what order the episodes were aired in. As far as I'm concerned, this is the perfect episode to watch first. It introduces our main characters very well. Marinette, a clumsy girl who babysits and has a big crush on a boy named Adrian. Alia, her quick thinking, dependable, best friend, and wingwoman. Adrian. He's in Marinette's class, and he's a model. Simple enough for episode 1. We get a good glimpse of their characters while in civilian form, but it picks up in their superhero form and we get their chemistry right away. Lots of flirting, but also a lot of trust and teamwork. The animation is fantastic and lets you know how alive and bouncy it is right from the start. And the villain Stormy Weather has a great design and her superpower is perfect for an opening episode. 
It lets you know that this mysterious villain known as Hawk Moth can create some pretty powerful opponents. The fight with her showcases the agility and destructive power of Cat Noir, and also showcases the quick thinking and creative power of Ladybug. This of course happens AFTER we see Stormy Weather blasting them through the city. This episode also features the first and only time where the Akuma victim tries to fight back before being Akumatized. It's a great introduction to the series, and just a great episode in general. Stormy Weather holds the position of fifth on my list. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The Puppeteer Manon makes another appearance in this episode, this time as the akumatized villain Puppeteer. And what a villain she makes! Using Marinette's dolls, she brings back three villains from previous episodes and uses them all to try and win. That's basically all she wants to do. You know, with that kind of logic and unstable emotions, you'd think Hawk Moth would go for a lot more children. But that would get creepy, so maybe it's a good idea he decides to mix it up. Having Lady Wi-Fi and Cat Noir have the voice of a five-year-old is pretty hilarious, and having four villains actively trying to take down Ladybug makes for one of the best fight scenes in the series, and goes to show just how amazing Ladybug truly is. I especially like how her lucky charm didn't give her an easy way out, but instead just gave her another weapon as if to say, good luck. This follows the most glorious 30 second fight scene in Miraculous Ladybug history as she blocks laser blasts, buzz saws, and pause buttons and uses the villain's own powers against them. Puppeteer's downfall was the fact she wanted to play more than she wanted to win. Now this episode doesn't offer much in terms of character development or build up, but as far as an action episode, it's one of the best. Simon Says Gabriel Agreste absolutely steals this episode, and is the reason for it being so high. His voice actor does an incredible job with his character, and adds this sense of mysteriousness to him. Almost as if he knows a lot more about what's going on than we do. This episode offers a lot in terms of character development and build-up. We get some great Ladybug and Adrian moments, including Ladybug making sure Adrian is okay, as they are both visibly flustered, and having them simultaneously compliment each other using Adrian's mom as an example. Now, if I were to take it literally, neither eyes nor smile match up with Marinette. But if Adrian meant more figuratively, like he sees the honesty in her eyes or smile like his mother's for example, then suddenly it becomes a lot more meaningful. We also see Cat Noir standing up to Mr. Agrest, something Adrian could never do. And he's even off fighting the bad guys Ladybug does her thing, proving that no, he is not useless, just extremely reckless at times. Simon Says is a cool concept for a villain and is able to give our heroes a good challenge. The villain fight overall wasn't anything too spectacular, honestly. Even if the villain fight wasn't the best, the interactions with Gabriel Agreste this episode were superb and is able to bump this spot up to number three. And oh my god, he must know that Adrian is Cat Noir now! Oh my gosh! <laughs> The Origin Episodes I'm going to be using both episodes for this spot as they are pretty much telling the same story. Let's consider it an hour-long special. Sound good? Alright. These episodes are thriving with amazing animation and character development. We finally get to see who Master Fu is and how a miraculous holder is chosen. And the reactions given by Marinette and Adrian were awesome. Especially how Adrian had his transformation pose down already. And may I just add, Ways and Master Fu's English voice actors fit their characters to a T. Whoever cast them made a great choice. Seeing the way Ladybug and Cat Noir bring out who Marinette and Adrian truly want to be is a spectacle to witness. Marinette gains confidence and assurance in herself, and Adrian gets the freedom he desperately needs. With nobody knowing who he is, he can also say what comes to mind without worry. This episode brings in the start of Marinette and Adrian's friendship with Alia and Nino, respectively, and even shows that, no, Marinette did not like Adrian from the start. Although that's once again Chloe's fault. 
The villain design is basically a rock monster, but the way they take him down without attacking him lets them show their creativity and improvisation skills on the fly. Perfect for learning the ropes to being a superhero. The sequence on the Eiffel Tower was a joy to watch. The animation was fluid and gave a lot of action to the scenario, and the ending where they fly down the tower as Cat Noir and Ladybug simultaneously save Milen, Ivan, and capture the Akuma is incredible. And of course, the umbrella scene. The scene that drives everybody crazy, and the moment where we see Marinette fall hard for Adrian. It's ridiculously cute, the animation and music are beautiful, and it sparked tons and tons of fan art. And if you really think about it, Adrian was the one who fell hard first, only to Ladybug rather than Marinette, thus creating the love square that practically defines the show. This episode contains a great beginning for our characters discovering who they can become, a fulfilling ending that left everyone in tears and high-pitched squeals, and reminds us of why we love the show so much. There is only one episode that beats it. Before we get to number one, let's recap all the other episodes so far. Number 10, Pixelator. Number 9, Volpina. Number 8, Animan. Number 7, Lady Wi-Fi. Number 6, The Mime. Number 5, Stormy Weather. Number 4, The Puppeteer. Number 3, Simon Says. Number 2, The Origin Episodes. And finally, Number 1. Gamer. Oh yeah, big surprise, the gamer likes Gamer as his favorite episode. Okay, okay, hear me out on this one, okay? Gamer provides everything I critique the other episodes for. Animation? Incredible, especially during the fight scene. The villain? Super creative, especially how he uses civilians as experience points to become even more powerful. The villain fight? The best in the series. First starting off as a freaking mech fight. Lady Bomb! Laser Wolf! turns into a 2D Street Fighter style beatdown. That's amazing! The video game lingo and references are everywhere. Some of it is hilarious. Some of it is kinda meh, but the stuff that does work really works. Get to work, take care of everything. March leap and do a barrel roll! This episode also features the most interaction between just Marinette and Adrian compared to any other episode. Who knew it would only take a video game to bond them? The awkwardness is still there, of course, but Adrian is able to open up a little bit to Marinette, which is really nice to see. This scenario opens up a lot of funny moments too, including flailing a picture of Adrian across the room. Sometimes what? Marinette's parents constantly checking up on them. And of course, Adrian always wanting a snack, but having to ask to take a break for it. It's great to finally see some interaction with these two. The only kind of build-up I got from this episode was the fact that Marinette gave Adrian her bracelet. It's not much, but the episode stands alone so well that it doesn't even need it. But it would still be nice to see the bracelet come back in Season 2. Now I also want to talk about Max, our villain. Holy do I empathize with this guy. He's a close second after Julika for the most sympathy I felt towards an Akuma victim. Being a competitive Smash Brothers player, it's an awful feeling when you practice for so long only to get knocked out before you even enter the tournament. At least that's how it was for me when I first started. And I mean, call it salty, but you genuinely feel upset, and I totally get that. When you get emotionally invested in a game, it's hard to remember it's just a game sometimes. To be fair, he kind of goes off a bit ranting about how he was supposed to win, therefore leading to his downfall, but when he was just asking to be alone for a bit, I really felt for the guy. Great animation, a creative and relatable villain, the best villain fight in the series, great character interaction and development, and even a bit of build-up thrown in, Gamer is my favorite episode of Miraculous Ladybug Season 1. 
So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed my list, and if you somehow haven't seen the show yet, I highly recommend watching it. Bug out.